Easter is this Sunday, and Good Friday, of course, is tomorrow. And so to tell us more is Pastor Miles McPherson from the Rock Church of San Diego. Nice to have you here. Nice to be here. Good to oh, be it's, it's, This is a great time for you. This is a big, big weekend for you, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Tell me about what you're doing at the Rock Church. Well, we're going to have a Good Friday service tomorrow night, and then two Easter services Saturday and uh, four Easter services on Sunday in all our campuses, 35 services total around San wow. Diego on all our campuses. And you can go to sdrock.com slash Easter for information on the campus near your, near your neighborhood. What does Easter mean to you? Well, Good Friday Easter is our Super Bowl. You know, whenever you break, uh, violate a relationship, there's a, a result of a broken heart. Whenever sure. you violate the law, you go to jail. If you violate drugs, you get addicted. On a spiritual level, when you violate God's law, you die and you are separated from God. Well, Jesus died in our place. All the people who wear crosses are wearing the execution table that he died on. He was whipped. He was beat. He was beard pulled out, uh, nails put in his uh, hands and feet when he was, and he hung there for six hours. Uh, so that's Friday, where he is paying the price for the consequences of our sin. Sunday, he rose from the dead. And what's amazing about that? And many people are praying to a God to save them, or praying to something to save them, to, to, so they can go to heaven. I've never done a funeral where people didn't say they're in a better place. The problem is a lot of people are praying to something or someone that's still dead or that has never lived in, in the first right. place. Jesus rose from the dead. So I want to trust my eternal life in someone who overcame death himself. And so him rising from the dead proves that he can deliver eternal life to us and then he can actually deliver on everything he's ever promised because if he can overcome death, he can fulfill everything else he ever promised. It's a hopeful message that sometimes is now eluding the millennials. We've been doing story after story about how young people are turning their backs on God, religion, they just don't believe. Why do you think that is and what are you doing to change that? Well, the gospel message uh, speaks for itself and a risen Savior speaks for itself and what we want to do is stick to the message. When God wrote the Bible and gave us his word, when he sent his son to die in our, in our place, he said, you don't need anything more than that. So we don't have to improve on that. We just have to make it clear and relevant and make sure the message gets out because listen all the millennials that that say that uh they still suffer broken heart they still get hung over they still lose their job they still have pain mm -hmm. that they deal with um, and they still have this emptiness in their heart that only God can fulfill. And so we just want to make sure we get the message out that Christ loves them and wants to have a relationship with them. You know, I talk to people a lot of times and ask them why they have children. And people have children so they can love their children and have a relationship with their children. The reason God made people is so he can have a relationship with us, not so we can go to church, so we can have a relationship. We're created for a relationship. We all have that yearning. That's why just about every song on the radio is about love. Right. It's because God made us for relationship. So we just want to make sure people understand that message, the simplicity of the gospel, and that Christ did the, made the ultimate sacrifice for us by dying on the cross. So it, it is no greater love a man can have for another man than to die for them. And so even the people who reject God, he says, I'm, I died for you too, but you need to accept my death in your place. Let me say this, though. There are a lot of people who will say to you, Pastor Miles, I, I, I'm, my life is, I don't belong in church. I'm imperfect, I, you know. I'm imp imperfect. I'm imperfect, I, 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 I'm a sinner, I'm a bad person. I shouldn't be in church. Yeah, yeah. I, what do you say to that? Oh, I, 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 I'm so glad you asked that. There is nobody that's perfect. <laughs> so if really? You, if you, so, <laughs> exactly. so, if you, so if you come to church, that's what it's for. That's right. exactly what it's for. Uh, uh, the past is not perfect. There, you know, Jesus died for sinners. If you think you're righteous, yeah, you don't belong. But if you're a sinner, you're exactly who he died for. So the reason we're there is to encourage people. I mean, we have people in our church who are going through everything under the sun. I mean, I was on uh, last year, my daughter, we were on TV. She was talking about her, her depression and suicide. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. Yeah. And so that's the great thing about the gospel is that everybody's qualified unless you think you're perfect. And so if you got issues, you are the ideal candidate for the love of God and, and, for, uh, and for church because that's where we all can get together, put our arms around each other and say, how can I help you? It's exactly the reason. So I want to encourage people to come out Friday night, tomorrow, 6 o'clock, to any one of our five campuses, and then Saturday, 4 and 6, and Sunday, 8, 10, 12, 6 o'clock. SDRock.com slash Easter. All the information is there. Pastor Miles, great. So this is the time to go. If you've avoided going to church, this is the perfect weekend. And Perfect. Just take that first step. Perfect. Move forward. Thanks so much for being with us and happy Easter to you. Happy Easter. <laughs>